Hi, I'm Clay Dixon. I'm Jake Lakes. And I'm Allison McKay. This video is the 40 yard dash, which is a sprint covering 40 yards. It is primarily run to evaluate the speed of athletes, particularly football players. The fitness components of speed is assessed through this test as demonstrated in this video. The equipment needed to administer the 40 yard sprint test include a flat running surface with some cones at the start and finish line 40 yards apart with at least 20 yards after the finish line for deacceleration. You may also want to include cones every 10 yards for split timing purposes. Also include a stopwatch. The stopwatch is important for recording the time of the athlete. Have the athlete warm up and stretch for several minutes. Allow at least two practice runs at submaximal speed. The athlete should assume a starting position using a three or four point stance. On an auditory signal, the athlete sprints 40 yards at maximal speed. The average of the two trials is recorded to the nearest tenth of a second. To administer this test, allow the athlete to assume the three-point stance. The timer will start on the athlete's first move and will stop when the athlete crosses the finish line. Clay completed his run in 4.9 seconds. Each segment can be broken down and analyzed with instantaneous velocities. Next, we had Jake go through a 40-yard attempt. Jake completed the attempt in 5.3 seconds. Here is the breakdown of Jake's run. According to milehighreport.com, Jake would fall under the offensive tackle position, and in my attempt earlier, I would fall under the defensive end position with a time of 4.9 seconds. The split timing is also good for coaches to determine the area the athlete needs to focus on in their training. For example, Jake had a two-second first 10-yard split. A coach would probably want him to work on his starting speed, and therefore the coach would want to focus on workouts to improve upon it. This is just one example of what could be many other uses for these splits. A few common mistakes that athletes tend to make is having too wide of a base and too upright of a trunk position. In order to fix this, first point your shin down the track, not towards the sky. To maintain this stance, pull your lead foot four to six inches back from the line. In a half kneeling position, your back knee should be in line with the instep of your front leg. Next, walk your hands in the front to create a forward body lean. Make sure your stance support arm is directly under your shoulder with no bend at the elbow. Your off hand should be bent at a 90 degree angle and placed on your hip. Finally, tuck your chin, raise your hips slightly above your shoulder, and take a deep breath. A solid start provides a great foundation you can build on through the acceleration phase. Be careful not to start the timer before or after an athlete takes off. Now that you know what to look for, let's go through a simple form analysis. In this attempt, Jake was a little bit too close to the starting line with his front foot. His elbows were at a good 90 degree angle, arms moved straight and not side to side, he averaged 2.1 yards per stride, which means he has a lot of power per, per step, knees at a good 90 degree angle at full extension, and his foot needs to be a little bit more dorsal flex when he's at full extension. Next, a form analysis of myself. In the start, I had a good ear to pocket movement. First half, my elbows were at a good 90 degree angle, but at the second half, the elbows began to degrade to a greater than 90 degree angle. Foot was at a good dorsal flex position, good for propelling yourself forward, and your knee at a good angle. Faster stride, but only getting two yards per stride as compared to 2.1 to 2.2 in Jake's attempt, meaning there is less power per stride. The 40-yard sprint is a useful tool for coaches and recruiters across the nation. Remember, the safety of the athlete is always number one. 